I'm Bob Terry. Welcome to the Forsaken Westerns. Up next, from 1954, we have a light-hearted Western. It's from a almost completely forgotten anthology series. And it takes place in 1902 San Francisco, and it has a, a very Maverick TV show feel to it, even though Maverick wouldn't start airing until years later. Our stars are David Niven, Marjorie Lord, Jimmy Dodd, Willis Bouchy, and William Fossis even in this. So sit back, relax, kick your boots up, and enjoy this, and we'll see you after the show. Eighteen thousand, eighteen thousand, twenty thousand dollars. Charlie. Yeah. Could you let me have sixty-five cents? You already owe me thirty-five cents this week. Oh, but this is for lunch. Sixty-five cents for lunch? Where do you eat the Ritz? I'm taking. Um... I'll let you have it back at the end of the week. It'd be cheaper for you to marry the girl. Thank you, Charlie. All set. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Lizzie, we can go to lunch. Oh, Andy, just for today, couldn't we go to Bluebackers? Bluebackers? Oh, I wish I could take you to places like that. Oh, I was just kidding. It, it doesn't really matter where we eat. It matters to me, though. Always pinching pennies, never quite able to make it till payday. You got up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. I didn't sleep all night worrying about it. Worrying? What about Andy? Look, no matter how I work this thing out, the cost of living's gone up again. We just can't afford to get married. You see, any decent sort of a house is going to cost us $20 a month, and then going to be another $15 a month. Fifteen? Well, milk's up to five cents a quart now, huh? and coffee, 17 cents. But, Andy, you're making $60 a month now. Well, how far is that going to go? You've got to buy furniture. It's going to take the major part of my savings. And then there's my insurance and clothing and miscellaneous expenses, such as streetcar fares, tobacco, doctor's bills. Doctor bills? Why, well, we're both young and healthy. I don't see any reason why. What about the babies? Oh, Andy, be quiet. $25. That's what it cost Charlie for his last one. Oh, Andy, $25 hush. for a baby. Even babies are going up now. No. Nope. No matter how I figure this thing out, $720 a year is not enough to get married on. Morning, Mr. Hopkins. One hundred, one hundred and ten, one hundred and twenty. Bessie, one hundred and twenty dollars. My salary for two whole months. Bring me the file on the CH, Marjorie, will you please? It's now or never. Where are you going? Mr. Dunwood's office. Oh, Andy, you can't. The board of directors are meeting in there today. My best chance. They all have to pass on it. You mean you're going to ask for a raise? We want to get married, don't we? But, Andy... Well? Mr. Dunwood, if you please. Can't you see that we're busy? Who are you? The senior paying teller, sir. Paying teller? Oh, yes. Meadows. Field, sir. Well, speak up, young man. What do you want? An increase. Yes, that's right, gentlemen. An increase, a raise. You ought to know better, Meadows. Field, sir. Interrupting an important meeting with such trivialities. Now, you know the rule. All increases are to be requested in writing. Write us a letter. I did twice. What's that? I said I did twice. I wrote two letters, one a year ago asking for an increase and one six months ago. Well... You didn't answer them. Well, it should be clear even to you that we feel that you are more than adequately compensated for what you do. 
Uh, gentlemen, perhaps it's my fault. Perhaps I didn't make it absolutely clear in those letters just why an increase is so necessary for me at this particular moment. Uh, while I agree that my salary was adequate when I first came to this bank eight years ago, now the cost of living has risen to such a degree that... You... you aren't in debt. Oh, no, sir. No, no, I was... I was considering getting married. Well, now, that is hardly one of the requirements of your job. Oh, but the requirements of my job have increased with your increased business. And you feel that you were responsible with this increase in our business? Oh, no, sir. But it is necessary for me now to memorize the signatures and study the banking habits of double the former number of your customers. And you feel that you should be compensated for that? Well, I think it should be taken into consideration. Your hours of labor are the same as your former hours, are they not? Yes, sir. What you can perform during these hours is all that was contracted for at the beginning of your employment. Ah, uh, but Mr. Dunwood, the point is... The point is that all salaries are subject to decrease as well as increase. Decrease? However, this doesn't seem to be indicated as yet in your case. That'll be all, Meadows. And now, gentlemen, concerning this Heppelweight merger, I feel that if we... Well? The name is Fields. But, oh, yeah. What did they say? For eight years, I've been cooped up in that cage, never late, never sick, and never short in my accounts. Then they didn't give you a raise. You know what I am to these people, Bessie? I'm a cog, an insignificant little cog in the wheel. Not a very important one at that. He didn't fire you. Worse than that, he gave me a pat on the head and told me to go back to work. He didn't even give me the dignity of remembering my name. Eight years I've worked here, and he doesn't even know my name. Well, you, you know how he is. He, he's a very busy man. I thought I had a position of trust. Look at this. All this money. Going through my hands, day in, day out. Mr. Dunwood, do you realize that enormous sums of money pass through my hands every day? Do you realize that the slightest slip in my care or my integrity or my memory would cause you irreparable loss? Is there no marketable value on a man's honesty? I'm paid for what I do, it's true. But am I rewarded for what I could but do not do? Will you excuse me, gentlemen? It seems to me that you overestimate your value to this organization. Now, your job requires very little intellectual endeavor and as to the merits of your honesty. I know it is a popular notion that honesty among men is rare. But that is a mistaken one. Honesty in its purest form, as honesty is usually understood, is a common commodity. We have never lost a dollar by the immorality of any of our employees. And we hasten to assure you that we have the greatest faith and confidence in you. Well, thank you very much, sir. And we wish to compliment you on the perfection with which you always fulfill your duty. Very good of you, Mr. Dunwood. Thank you. Very diplomatic, Dunwood. Sir, turn them out, I say. Give them a chance to rotate. Ah, never ride them on a tight rein, gentlemen. <laughs> Shall we proceed? I have been belittled to the uttermost point. There's, there's not a foothold left for my dignity. Oh, don't take it so seriously. They even take my honesty for granted. They don't consider that I might have a, have a normal temptation. Well, of course you haven't. I've got to get rid of these papers. Now stop worrying about it. We'll make out somehow. that is, don't you? Oh, sure. Hepperweight. Yeah, that means we work Saturday afternoon, I'll bet. Saturday? Why? Because of the audit. What audit? Haven't you heard about the Hepperweight merger? Well, how does that affect us? You'll find out. We'll have auditors in and out of our hair for a week. Auditors when? According to Wallach, in a couple of days, I guess. And boy, they better not find any mistakes in the books. No, they better not. They say this Hepperweight's a fanatic. He won't touch a bank if there's a shortage of a two-cent stamp. <laughs> That's it. Fifty thousand dollars. 30 and the 20. Mm -hmm. That's um, 114,860. 114,860 even. Boy, what a day. 
Night, Andy. Good night, Charlie. to ten years. Andy. Uh-huh. Andy! What's the matter with you this morning? Oh, nothing. I'm... I'm fine. You certainly don't act like it. Willie. Yes? Is that Mr. Dunwood's mail? Yes. Make sure he gets this. Sure thing. Gentlemen, do you realize that if Hepperway brings in his own auditors, it's as though he questioned our integrity? Come in. Oh, it's nonsense. That's just good business. Want to remember that Hepplewaite is a very cautious man. Well, gentlemen, we have nothing to worry about. <laughs> Certainly no one could ever question our... Integ... Integ... Oh, no, you... Hmm? What, you, what you... What's the matter? Fields! Yes, Mr. Dunwood? Come in here. Yes, Mr. Dunwood. Did you write this? Yes, sir. Well, what's the meaning of it? It's perfectly clear. But it says here that your accounts are $114,800 short. That's $114,860. No. Oh, no. Oh. That's impossible. It's easy to check. But, Smith! Get Fields' accounts, bring his books in here, and check the cash on hand at the tellers. Accounts are short. $114,860. That's right. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Call the police. Somebody uh, call the police. No, gentlemen. I wouldn't recommend that. You're not being very rational, you know. What are you saying? Well, do you want to run on the bank? You see, if you call the police, then the newspapers will find out. If the newspapers find out, well, we all know how touchy depositors get when there's a shortage of cash. You'll be wiped out in an hour. Uh, no, no, now, Meadow, uh, Fields. <laughs> now, we've been together a long while. You're a respected member of this organization. Am I? Well, now, now you realize what a shortage like this would do to us? Oh, yes, I do indeed. Well, now, now if you would just tell us where the money is. Now, wouldn't I be foolish to do that? What? I went to a great deal of trouble to take that money. But you will be in a great deal more trouble before you're through. Don't you realize what the penalty is for embezzlement? According to the National Currency Act, from five to ten years in the penitentiary. You, you don't mind going to jail? Certainly not. You see, for the maximum of ten years, I'll be extremely well paid. $11,486 a year. And during that time, I would have ample opportunity to study a few languages and to read extensively. At the end of the time, I would still be in the prime of my life and the possessor of an enormous amount of money. Then I'd travel, enjoy myself. It's a very attractive thought, really, when you look at it that way, don't you think so? Yeah. Uh, how much of an increase was it uh, that you wanted? Oh, by George, that's blackmail. And we will not pay blackmail. We'll prosecute you, we'll put you behind bars, and we'll recover our money, and don't you think we won't? Where will you find it? Well... It might be anywhere. It might be buried under the ground, it might be checked in some locker someplace, it might be mailed to a distant post office. It might be on its way out of the country. No, I don't think you'll prosecute. Besides, Mr. Hepplewaite wouldn't like that. Hepper... Hepplewaite? Hepplewaite. Oscar J. Hepplewaite. Well, it's been rather a tiring morning, gentlemen. The I think I'll take the rest of the day off, give you a chance to reach some decision. And what's going on? Uh, don't worry, Bessie. Everything's going to be all right. I may not be able to see you tonight, but don't worry. Just, just trust me. What are we going to do? You know how Hepplewaite feels about the slightest tinge of scandal. He won't touch us with a ten-foot pole now. Can we raise the money? Can we cover the shortage? With the audit, just two days off? Why, these steps... What Wait a minute, he... I have an idea. Smith! We'll put a detective on his trail. Get me the Chatterton Detective Agency on the telephone. That will stop his little game. <laughs>
I'll take this one. And that one. And the blue one. Oh, wrap them all up. handsome cab, 10.15 p.m. Mr. Fields then retired to his boarding house where he extinguished a light in his bedroom, raised the window and pulled down the shade. 11.40. Well, what about this morning? This morning. 7.14, Mr. Fields raised the shade, closed the window. Well? That's all. He never came out. He never came out? At 7.48, I got uneasy and I went to the door and asked for him. Well? Landlady said he must have gone out the back way. I lost him. And pray we got separated. That's too bad. Now, shall we get down to business? Can I uh, speak freely? Uh, go, go. Yes, sir. Have you, um, have you reached your decision? <clears throat> no doubt, Mr. Fields, about this increase. I thought three hundred dollars a year would do very nicely. Well, three hundred dollars, that doesn't seem too bad. Do you think so, gentlemen? <laughs> oh, excuse me. Hello. Oh, yes, Mr. Hepplewaite. The audit? Yes, Mr. Hepplewaite. Audit? Yes, gentlemen, the audit. Or should I call it a reprieve, Mr. Fields? I don't understand. Mr. Hepplewaite has just asked, due to the press of business, that the audit be postponed for two weeks. Two weeks? Do you know what that means, Mr. Fields? It means that the board of directors and I will have sufficient time to raise the $114,860 to cover your theft. But, but what about the scandal? You know that Mr. Hepplewaite will never touch a bank when there's been a scandal. There will be no scandal, because we don't intend to prosecute. Not prosecute? But don't think you're going to get away with our money. Because as long as it's in your possession, we will follow you. We will hound you until you will beg us to take it back. We shouldn't be eating in such an expensive place. That porterhouse steak, 75 cents. Well, this is my last chance. Hepplewaite comes here every day, and I've got to see him. Oh, Andy, why don't you give the money back? It's gone too far. If I give it back now, I lose everything. I never intended to keep the money. I just wanted them to see how wrong they were. Yes, but spending it the way you're doing, they'll have you arrested for it. That's not their money. It's mine. Yours? My savings account. Oh, Andy. That was to have been for our furniture. Yes, I know, but I had an idea. If they thought I was spending their money, they'd come to terms more quickly. Now I haven't got any money left to bluff with. Shh. Ah, good morning, Mr. Appleway. I have your table reserved. This one, please. Uh, my special salad. Yes, Mr. Applewhite. No, 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 no. You haven't got it yet. Mr. Applewhite, today we tried with crab meat. I said it was some kind of fish, but I didn't say crab meat. Why can't you people find the recipe for a simple salad? If you could only remember where you ate the salad, and what was in it, and the name of it. Well, that's your business. All right, we'll try again with lobster or trout. Herring. May I suggest it is perhaps a herring slash salad? Herring slash? Oh, I don't know. I, well, that could be the name of it. Bring me two unsalted herrings, four boiled potatoes, some endive, and two eggs, one hard boiled and chopped. And this is my fiance. Uh -huh. Come, come. I just a little touch of vinegar. You're quite sure we haven't met before. It does seem to me that... Oh, of course, it was in the bank. The bank? Yes, I'm associated with the National Commonwealth and Trust. Mm, that's all? Now, we just toss it lightly, never with a heavy hand. Mm. Uh, what do you do at the bank? Lately, I've been working very close to Mr. Dunwood. Oh. As a matter of fact, we're on the point of consummating a $114,000 deal. Mm. Give Mr. Hepperweight some of this.
By George, this is it. Hey, you saw how you made it, Henry. That's the way it should be made. Very uh, good, sir. Uh, I will remember. Good heavens, we must be running along. Oh, uh, won't you join me? I'm sorry, though. I have to get back to the bank. Oh. Well, I do hope to meet you again, sir. Yeah. Oh, of course, I shall see you tomorrow at the audit. Oh, I'm afraid not. I've had to have the audit put back. Put back? Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. Come, Bessie. Uh, Fields, uh, wait a minute. What do you mean, too bad? Well, it's none of my business. It's your money. Now, please don't quote me, but too bad. Oh. Well, it's been very nice running into you, sir. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, Fields, uh, much obliged for the salad. Andy, how did you know how to make that salad? My father was a chef. Hmm. All right, Fields, you win. But only because Heppel will accept the order back to tomorrow. Then it's agreed. A raise of $300 per annum? Agreed. Yes, I think this contract will do very nicely. You realize, of course, that I'm handing the money back of my own free will. Yes, yes. You acknowledge that most men would prefer jail to relinquishing control of such a large sum? Of course. You see, of course, that I never intended to keep the money. It was a matter of dignity as a human being. Uh, Mr. Fields, now, uh, about the money. You do believe in my integrity? Well, yes, yes. You appreciate my motives? Only too well. You appreciate them to be just? Unqualifiedly. Now, if you, if you will just tell us where the money is. The money? You'll find it all here, gentlemen. Well, I, I must admit, Fields, this whole maneuver was darn clever. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, it would be a shame to waste such talent on a paying teller. It would? Absolutely. It is the considered opinion of the board that such perseverance and ingenuity should be rewarded by a promotion. Promotion? Right. To vice president. This morning, we passed a resolution promoting you to said position. Do you accept? Well, vice president? In charge of securities. It's quite a step up from paying teller, young man. Well, it certainly isn't. Thank you very much, gentlemen. <laughs> then you do accept. Oh, of course. Congratulations, Field. Oh, thank you, Mr. Dunn. But I must say, this is all very exciting. <laughs> well, I'm glad you think so. And now, as uh, vice president in charge of securities, it is the opinion of the board that your services are no longer required. I beg your pardon? You're fired. Fired? Fired! But you can't do that. You just signed a contract giving me a raise of $300 a year. As paying teller. But you have been promoted to vice president. And as vice president, you are fired. Now look here, Mr. That Hanwood. will be all, Fields. Good day. Fields, they told me I'd find you here. <laughs> oh, hello, Dunwood. See, I just stopped by to ask you to write down that recipe for me. I want to put my cook onto it right away. Were well, you... you know Fields? Know him? Well, we had a look together. Very brilliant young man you have here. <laughs> Makes me feel good to come into an organization with young blood. Oh, well, I'll be hey, right. By the way, why don't you and your fiancé come over to my house for dinner tomorrow night? Lovely girl. Oh, uh, Mr. Hepburn, I'm, I'm afraid we can't. Huh? I have to go to Chicago. Most interesting offer from 7th National there. You're leaving? Well, what's the trouble? Well, uh, Dunwood here has offered me the vice presidency, but um, we just don't seem to be able to get together on the question of salary. You mean to tell me you're going to let this brilliant young man be stolen right away from us? Well, if this organization is as short-sighted as that, I don't want any part of this merger. No, 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 wait, Mr. Helpaway, let's talk this over. I'm sure we can come up with something. If you insist. You, Mrs. Fields?
What a magnificent, entertaining episode of classic television, and what a wonderful cast. And as far as Westerns go, we even had a bank hold up, although it wasn't your normal type of shoot 'em up Western bank hold up. Thank you for joining us here for the Forsaken Westerns. We hope you'll join us here again. My name's Bob Terry. Have a great day.